Hello and welcome back to Leon Talks Film. So today I am going to be doing a CEX pickups video, or just a Blu-ray pickups video, I should say. Um, I got them all in CEX, so yeah. Um, it is a collection of quite a few things. I traded in a bunch to get some titles that I'm very, very happy to have in my collection. Some of these I've wanted for a while, some of these were kind of blind buys, and some of these are films that I love and I just wanted a cool edition for. So, without further ado, let's get into the two non-boutique releases, or, well, there's technically three non-boutique releases, but we'll start with these two first. And uh, the first one is Baby Teeth. Uh, so yeah, horrible CEX sticker residue. WD-40 will be coming in handy for that. But yeah, I've heard excellent stuff about Baby Teeth. Um, haven't seen it yet. And this was three pounds, I think. It's from Picture House. They released um, Vortex over here. So um, that was a pretty cool Blu-ray release. So I'm very, very excited to check out. Baby teeth, and also get rid of the sticker on the front. Woo! Anyway, next we have Hunger Games Catching Fire. So I already own this. I think I have a steelbook of it or the Blu-ray or something. But this was only a pound, and this is some weird digi-book, uh, like, digi-pack packaging. And I was like, you know something? I think this kind of looks pretty cool. I'll spend a pound on this. Technically, I didn't even spend a pound because it was a voucher. But you open it up, and it's actually... Yeah, it's like a little digi book. It's um, pretty cool. I like it. Um, Catching Fire is probably like the best Hunger Games film as well. And then inside, the stuff here. I think there might have been a booklet or something along those lines also included, but wasn't there. But honestly, for a pound, I'm happy to have it just for this cool packaging. Um, yeah, no, I um, Hunger Games films are fine. They're not something like I love or anything, but again, I like this one enough and I was happy to pay a pound for that. So yeah, four pound for two films so far. Okay, next. Now this one was probably one of the better deals, especially for a new film. I picked up Tar on Blu-ray from CEX for eight pounds. That's crazy. Um, yeah, no, I really, really loved Tar. It comes with the slipcover, it comes with the booklet, it comes with the Blu-ray and the DVD. Uh, it didn't get a 4K release over here, unfortunately, and although I really would like to import it, it's like £35, which is a bit out of my price range right now for a film uh, that I could get on Blu-ray for like almost £30 cheaper, you know? Um, but yeah, no, it's a cool little booklet that's included. You get some, it seems to be some uh, like yeah, information, essays, analysis on the film and whatnot, as well as some review quotes at the back. And yeah, the slipcase is nice too. Um, yeah, uh, I really, really loved her. I think that Kate Blanchett should have won Best Actress. I think she gave probably the best performance of last year. And this is coming from somebody who loved everything everywhere all at once. I just think Kate Blanchett was better. She's incredible in this film. But yeah, Tar, £8. Can't complain for that. Next, for £12, we have the BFI box set, uh, Early Women Filmmakers from 1911 to 1940. So yeah, again, this was £12, and on the back it says it has over it has over 10 hours of material with 22 films released within the time span of those almost 30 years. And then there's like a handful of extras too, and then inside... Again, there's a nice little booklet and stuff. It has information about each of the directors and their films. And then, yeah, you've got the actual uh, little case here with all of the films. I say little, it's a big case. Yeah, four discs worth of films. And you know something? I'm always trying to get into more like a... I don't know, influential early cinema. And for £12, I was like, that sounds like an absolute steal. I mean, there's so much content on here. 641 minutes of content. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. It should be really interesting. I really, really can't wait to dig into this one and see what it's like. Plus, it's by the BFI, uh, released by the BFI, and they put some pretty great stuff out. Um, also, from the BFI, is a film I had the criterion for, but again, it was only like six, seven pounds, and I was like, I kind of want the BFI release, and that's Eyes Without a Face. So yeah, I have the Criterion release of this, that'll be in my Criterion uh, collection video, and I'll probably talk a bit more in depth on the film then. But yeah, this contains a few new exclusive bonus features, uh, some different interviews, early short films from the director. And yeah, if you haven't seen Eyes Without a Face and you're a horror fan or just a cinema fan, you owe it to yourself to check this out. It is incredible. It's genuinely one of the greatest horror films ever made. Even though it's not 
overtly horrifying. Like, the subject matter is horrifying. By today's standards, you might not be scared by the film, but I, if anything, I consider it more of, like, a really, really, like, upsetting drama film. Um, yeah, amazing, visionary film. I absolutely love it. And yeah, you get the Blu-ray and the uh, DVD. Uh, and also a booklet, which is, like, how many pages? 32, 33 pages. Um, again, you've got essays, information about the transfer and all that good stuff. And yeah, I, I like Eyes Without Face enough to own two copies of it. So yeah, we've got Eyes Without Face. Next, we've got a film I've never seen. This was five pounds, and that is The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner. So... I have no idea what this is about, but I saw it was a BFI release, I saw it was a fiver, and I mean, I had plenty of money in vouchers uh, to spend, so I was like, you know something, I'll take a chance on this. So, I'll have to report back to let you guys know what I think of it, it's a film by Tony Richardson, and it also includes a short documentary that he made, as well as a video essay by the cinematographer, and a commentary by uh, the lead actor, the writer, and a film historian, and then inside... You also get a booklet too, with the DVD and Blu-ray. So, not too bad, not too bad for a fiver. Um, next, we have a film that, after researching it online, is considered one of the greatest of all time, which I've never seen, and that is Farewell My Concubine. Uh, I hope that I pronounced that right, but yeah, I've heard this is fantastic. It was a Palme d'Or winner at the um, Cannes Film Festival, so... I really, really am excited to check this one out. It is lengthy. It's 171 minutes, so... Jeez. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to find an afternoon or, like, an evening free to check this one out. But yeah, it came out in 1993, and in terms of extras, it's kind of bare bones. It just has a 24-minute making of documentary, but you do get the film on Blu-ray and DVD. I don't know if it initially came with a booklet. I was looking online, there's no mention of a booklet on the back, and I couldn't find any information online about a booklet. But yeah, this was £10. Um, so I figured, you know something? It's apparently out of print, and it's a great film, so why not? Why not? Use my credit. Uh, next, we've got a film I literally just watched. Um, I saw that they had this, it was a tenor, and I really, really, really have wanted to see this for a very, very long time, and that is the Kiyoshi Kurosawa film, Cure. Um, jeez, I kind of want to do a review for this on the channel at some point, but, oh my god goodness. So, this director here, I've seen one of his films before. I've seen just one, and that is... Not pul Pulse. Um, also, if you haven't seen if that artwork before, this artwork here, if you're an Arrow video collector. Yeah, so um, this director here is really, really fascinating. So, I, I liked Pulse. I wasn't, like, head over heels for it or anything. Um, I think the drama in this film is kind of... I don't want to say uninteresting, but I wasn't very invested in it. But the horror segments of this film are terrifying. Uh, yeah, Kurosawa has such a way of just directing these scenes that they don't really show stuff in the same way that you'd expect from a horror film. And even though I wouldn't say that Cure is a horror film, I'd say it's more of a psychological thriller, it still has some of the scariest moments I've ever seen in a feature film. It is genuinely incredible. Bong Joon-ho considers it one of the greatest films of all time, and I'd have to agree, so does Ari Aster. Um, yeah, this is an incredible, like, thriller. Um, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, as, as soon as uh, there's a scene on a beach, like in the opening 10 minutes of the film, as soon as I saw that, I knew I was in for a ride. And yeah, the ending to this film is incredible. I, I can't wait to uh, dive into this more. Uh, this is a Blu-ray release from a couple of years ago. It has an interview with Kim Newman. It has an interview with a director, um, both new interview with director and an old one, as well as the original trailer. And then included also is a booklet, and you get the film on Blu-ray and DVD. But yeah, no, Cure is fantastic. Um, probably a 10 out of 10. I mean, I know I just saw it, but I, I thought it was fantastic. I loved this. And this is part of the Masters of Cinema collection, so... 
yeah, £10 for that. Was really happy to pick that up. Next, we've got a film I haven't seen, but I've kind of wanted to see after seeing Martin Scorsese's American film documentary, the like four hour one. Uh, and that is Samuel Fuller's 40 Guns. So, Sam Fuller, I've checked out quite a few of his films already. Uh, in the Masters of Cinema collection, I actually own White Dog, which, if you've seen my Eureka video, I will have like spoken very highly about that film. And this is a Western he made from 1957. So, in terms of Fuller, I've never actually seen any of his westerns. I've seen a lot of his early noir films via Samuel Fuller box set that Indicator released. I checked out all of the films in that and really, really loved those. But seeing him kind of tackle a western sounds really interesting to me. And this was six pounds, I think. Six or eight pounds. Uh, it's part of the Masters of Cinema collection again. And yeah, this was a 20th Century Fox film as well. So... If this isn't already out of print, I know it's gonna go out of print soon and probably cost a fortune, so I went to pick it up for that, but also because I want to get into westerns more myself. Uh, the western is probably the genre that I have the least experience in. Um, I've checked out more spaghetti westerns than, like, traditional westerns, so yeah, definitely want to check this one out. Comes with the DVD, the Blu-ray, and a really, really nice and quite extensive looking booklet, which is how many pages? Yeah, it's a 35, 36 page book. Um, so yeah, really, really interested in checking out 40 Guns. And for a couple of pounds, uh, for like, what, seven, six pounds or whatever. I mean, I'm happy to get another Masters of Cinema release. And now finally, this is probably my favorite pickup of the bunch. Because it is a title I've wanted on Blu-ray for so long. And it's an Arrow video title. And... I've almost bought the standard edition so, so, so many times, but I wanted the limited edition. I wanted it with the slipcover. I wanted it with the booklet and the bonus disc because uh, the limited edition uh, contains a re-edit of this film. And for some reason, like when I went into CEX, they had a pile of the films that had just been traded in. They hadn't even put the little like circular CEX stickers on them. So I knew this was just brand new in. Someone had traded it in. And for some reason, they marked this as the standard price of the standard Blu-ray, which was £8. And when I saw it, I was like, I'm having that. And that is the Brian De Palma film, Raising Cain. So yeah, getting this in CEX with the slipcover, with the two extra discs, and with the booklet is probably one of my best CEX finds in a while, and it's also in great condition as well. Again, no sticker residue whatsoever. Um, it looks, like, great. It looks in great condition. And this is one of the few De Palma films that I still haven't seen. I'm really, really excited to. I've got about eight or nine De Palma films that I have left to see. Like, I've seen so many of his, because he's made, like, what, like, 30-something films or something insane. So, I'm really, really excited to see this. But, yeah, the real, the real selling point of this limited edition is that director's cut, because De Palma's actually approved this cut. It is reordered. It reorders the footage as originally planned in the shooting script and it's assembled by Pete uh, Gelderblom. I hope that's uh, pronounced all right. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very excited to check this out. I'll be checking out the uh, theatrical cut first and then I'll check the director's cut out at some point. But yeah, I love Brian De Palma. I think he's fantastic and Raising Kane is one I've wanted to see for a very, very long time. But yeah, that does it for my CEX haul. Not a bad haul whatsoever, I don't think. We got minus three of the releases, cause even though one of them is like a brand new title. I got a bunch of boutique stuff. Uh, I love my boutique releases. I've wanted this one forever. I've wanted to see this one forever. I love this one. This sounds intriguing. This sounds intriguing. This sounds intriguing. And this sounds intriguing. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I am i don't know, I'm really happy with my haul and also can't wait to uh, revisit Tar sometime soon. But yeah, not not a bad haul whatsoever. Um, but yeah, that does it for today's video. I hope you did enjoy. Um, in terms of plans for videos, uh, I think I'm going to have to get around to doing a um, collection video soon. Um, of either Arrow Video, ATA, 
or Criterion. So let me know in the comments, which would you want to see out of those three? Um, I'm thinking Criterion would probably be the easiest one because it's the smallest of the three, but I definitely do want to dig into my Arrow video updated collection and my 88 release at some point. Releases, sorry. Uh, but yeah, that does it for today's video. If you enjoyed, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Comment below and let me know what is the best film I picked up today and what should I get to watching first. Don't say Cure though because I just saw that one already, but besides from Cure, which should I check out? Anyway, thank you for watching. Stay safe, have a fantastic day, and I will speak to you all later. Bye!